John Popovich uh, here again in front of the Living Wall, uh, continuing our series of uh, legacy interviews. And I can't tell you what a privilege it is uh, to do this particular interview uh, with Dr. Michael Chop. Uh, Dr. Chop uh, has been an absolute leader internationally in neuroscience uh, research. He's uh, vice chairman of neurology research uh, and a number of other titles that he holds in terms of uh, neuroscience uh, research activity. So Thank Michael, you. It's Thank great you, to, John. Great it's to a have pleasure. you here. So what brought you into the field of, uh, of research and uh, really uh, the interest within neurosciences? Well, really, it was serendipity. Uh, in my former life, I was actually a, a physicist, a professor of physics and mathematical and solid state physics. And uh, I had a friend, just very briefly, I had a friend who was a neurosurgeon and, uh, and he was doing some work in hydrocephalus and he thought, well, there's some physics having to do in hydrocephalus. So he invited me to see a procedure uh, and to what, measure intracranial pressure, pressure in the CSF. So I, I went down, I watched it and I noticed these little pulsations in the CSF pressure and I asked him, Harold, this information here. Has anyone ever looked at the frequency component of these pressure pulsations? I said, no. Literally, I stopped doing my solid state mathematical research. The following week, I set up a lab. We started doing studies in mathematical engineering models of intracranial pressure pulsations as they relate to arterial input, relating them to clinical outcome. And Could you describe for, uh, for our viewers what, what type of work that uh, your, your laboratory is really embarking on at this time? Say so four hours, well, uh, well, but okay, we, just we just very three and a half. okay, just very <laughs> briefly. So what we've done essentially is pioneered the concept, the whole field of restorative neurology. So historically, when you had a stroke or an, an injury to the brain, you treated the damage, and we've pioneered work with TPA here, and that was very good. But clinically, it just Maybe five to 10% of patients, let's say, get TPA uh, after they have a stroke. You gotta, you're running against the clock. Uh, what we realize is that the body tries to remodel itself. And maybe what we should be doing is amplifying the endogenous, the inherent restorative processes. So we said, instead of treating the damage, let's stimulate and enhance what, uh, the restorative processes that occur in other parts. Treat the intact brain, treat the intact spinal cord, and the intact heart. And let's see whether that creates a system, a network that improves neurologic outcome. We pioneered the whole area of stem cell therapy. We are the very first to use stem cells from cord blood, from from uh, bone marrow cells, other cells, to stimulate neurologic recovery. So the very first publications in that area, intravenous administration of stem cells to stimulate recovery came from, came from our lab in, at Henry Ford Hospital. So a little field of neurodegenerative diseases that uh, really has been significantly stalled or uh, in terms of major uh, breakthroughs could really be uh, uh, be moved forward with the Alzheimer's, the cognitive dis uh, dementia, the vascular mm -hmm. dementia, all, all that in neural injury, degenerative disease, aging, multiple sclerosis. We we do all these models, and we. So you're you obviously um, um, you obviously think differently than than most people. I and and because I'm an outsider. Yeah. That's the logic, I think. You started off with the question of where, right. how I got into this. Because I can ask naive questions and think of it in a very simple way. Because I'm a formally trained as a physicist. And, and we think in paradigms, in, in very much simpler models. So I can, I can see the forest from the trees. In, uh, and I can ask questions. And if people say they're stupid, okay, I'm not, I'm not real. You know, I, I've, I'm an outsider. And so, and I, you learn to trust your intuition and, and to synthesize different areas of science. And, and that allowed me to take risks and to ask different questions. Just want to congratulate uh, you on, uh, on absolutely incredible work 
Uh, you're one of the uh, one of the real superstars here at uh, at Henry Ford, and I really uh, really want to express my appreciation for that. I really uh, I, I I hope people understand that. Well, well I, I have to express my appreciation for the opportunity to spend so many years working here and working with these fantastic people and people and bringing the clinic and the and the laboratory together with this opportunity to address very important clinical problems. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Thank you.